What is going on, community? What is going on, people of Earth? This is the Flash by Night channel. This is Transformers Tuesday, and we are going to cover Transformers Shattered Glass issue number three. And I know I said before with the Marvel Transformers covers that there's usually a lot of truth and a lot of uh, foreshadowing in these covers. And I will tell you that this cover is no different. So let's get into it. So as a quick overview to Shattered Glass and where we are right now, uh, it is a story in an alternate universe where the Autobots are evil and the Decepticons are good. We have our main character who is Starscream, who has a bounty on his head uh, from Goldbug, and he is looking for Megatron because he needs Megatron to basically help him rally the Decepticons because he knows something inside of him that could change the fate of Cybertron. Right now, Cybertron is under the rule of the evil Autobots, but even those Autobots have split into three branches, uh, three different territories, one belonging to Prowl, one belonging to Orion Pax, well, actually Optimus Prime in present day, and one belonging to Goldbug. But in this book, we are going to flash back to the earlier days of Starscream, and we're going to see exactly why there is a bounty on his head and exactly how we got to this point. So there are a lot of flashbacks in this book, but I'm going to start off by letting you know that present day, uh, Starscream and Megatron are sneaking in with some rather dubious disguises, but sneaking into Gold City under Goldbug's nose because they need other materials and they need to get Decepticons together. And there is a reason why they need to be in Gold City to do that. So as we flash back to a familiar point in our story where you see Megatron having Prowl by the throat, you also see Starscream and Jetfire, who are in the past, at this point, really good friends and also partners in their venture. What Starscream was up to prior to being a Decepticon, prior to the war, prior to all of this mayhem, is that Starscream, believe it or not, was a historian and academic. Starscream wanted to do research and wanted to... Uh, revive one of the Titans, not for his power, not for his mass, not for the threat of taking over. Starscream wanted the Titans knowledge and wanted to figure out how to get Cybertron back to its glory days. Because Cybertron is not like the current day really run down Cybertron, run by warlords, but Cybertron still is way past its glory days and Starscream and Jetfire think that the Titans can bring it back, but they need support. And one of the people they go to for support, reluctantly, is Orion Pax. And Orion Pax is hearing their uh, pleas for support, and he is thinking to himself, what can they do for me? Because Orion Pax sees the possibility of awakening a or multiple titans and he wants to figure out how he can use it for his own ends and i really really like this scene with uh starscream and jetfire kind of hashing things out in front of uh metroplex's head but also we see jetfire being kind of uh tired of asking and kind of aggravated and anxious because things are not going as fast as he would like them to. Funding is not coming as fast. Partnerships aren't coming as fast. And where Starscream has the patience to wait and, and wait and make things happen, Jetfire is not that patient. And where Starscream 
doesn't want to ask Orion Pax or anybody of his ilk in the Senate for help because of the quid pro quo that's going to go on, Jetfire has gone behind Starscream's back and has indeed gone to the Senate, gone to Orion Pax to ask for the help they need to get their project rolling with the Titans. Obviously, this is going to cause a split between Jetfire and Starscream because Starscream at this point is neither Decepticon nor Autobot. He is just a researcher and historian trying to make the world better. Uh, but Jetfire seems to have picked his side. Flashing back to the present, we see one of my favorite scenes and a thing that made me smile. As we said before, Megatron and Starscream are in the belly of the beast. They are in Gold City, and inside the belly of the beast is Soundwave, basically playing the moral leader, or I guess the morale leader, if you could say it, of the Decepticons. So he is out down in this, in this basement. I don't know if Goldbug knows or doesn't know if Soundwave is down there, but he is down there basically keeping hope alive for the Decepticons that are still around living. He is down there making sure that he keeps contact, making sure that the surviving Decepticons know that they're not alone. He doesn't sleep much. He doesn't rest much. He doesn't come away from his radio much because his sole purpose in life is to take care of the, the morale of the surviving Decepticons. And I think that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, for whatever reason, why ever they thought this was cool, or maybe this was always part of the plan, Megatron and Starscream are basically in the cafeteria somewhere in Gold City having lunch when they are interrupted by Blaster, who is ready to throw down who is ready to uh, probably collect that standing bounty, which I think has doubled by now. Uh, so we have a nice little fight between Blaster, some of his tapes, Megatron, and Starscream. And then we have a scene where basically Megatron tells Starscream to run. They're outnumbered and Starscream's mission is more important than them sitting there and fighting with Blaster and all of the other Autobot backup that he eventually gets. And so Starscream is torn because he wants to continue his mission, but he doesn't want to leave Megatron behind. He is that loyal. But as we said in the previous issue, Megatron is a leader and Megatron knows that the greater mission is more important than himself. So having left Megatron having had his friend turn on him and be completely Autobot now and having the, his plans go awry. He basically goes up to Metroplex and he is going to try and get the information he needs uh, even though nothing's perfect, things aren't perfect, but he's going to try and get what he can get from Metroplex and plugs himself in. But as you can see, he gets hit from behind and he gets a rude awakening because he has been 100% betrayed by his friend and he has been turned in to Goldbug. And that is how we end Transformers Shattered Glass issue number three. Things are not going according to plan. Things have surprised us, I think. I'm very surprised by Megatron. I stay surprised by Starscream in this instance. I have no clue what they thought they were going to do in Gold City besides get caught, but I guess no risk it, no biscuit. But Shattered Glass issue number three, once again a blast, once again a great universe to visit. I am excited to share issues number four and five with you in the future. So, Keep on checking it out. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you saw something you liked. If you did enjoy yourself, go ahead, hit that like button. And if you want to keep up with me, catching up with the Transformers, 
hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Of course, feel free to leave comments. If you watch this on release date on Transformers Tuesday, I will be on Gary B, the Casual Comic Guys channel at 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern, Tuesday night uh, for the 10 one one And we're going to show off some fun books and we're going to chat it up. But as we always do at this time, love yourself, love others, and I will be back in the flash.